Hello Internet! Today we are going to be taking a look at .NET Interactive and how you can use it inside of Jupyter Notebooks. Jupyter Notebooks are a way for you to embed code samples into a markdown file. So if you're trying to take notes and include actually executable code inside of those notes, uh, this gives you a way to do that. Uh, and so we're going to take a look at how you can do that with .NET uh, using .NET Interactive. Um, so the first thing to get started is to actually install the Jupyter Notebook plugin. Um, or you can use a, a Jupyter Notebook software. There's other things that aren't in uh, Visual Studio Code like I'm using, um, but I found this to be super easy and it just sort of plugs into everything else you're doing. This is really useful for like giving examples about a project you're using or something like that if you need to include like documentation around something or just want personal notes. Um, so this is the extension that you'll want. And then once you have that installed, uh, you can open, open the command window and click uh, create a Jupyter notebook. This is going to create an IPYND and B um, file, which is really hard to understand. And I think the default um, runtime is going to be in Python. This is typically used for things like machine learning uh, examples. So you'll see that as sort of the default. But you can switch the runtime to most other languages that are supported. Um, so in this case, we're going to swap over to .NET Interactive. Um, so let's do that. Let's go here. Um, we can see all of the different languages. Let's just choose C Sharp. And select um, some code. <laughs> so let's just write something to the console. Write line, hello, uh, world of zero. There we go. And so what this lets us do is kind of create blocks inside of our document that represent different things. So you can have blocks for markdown or blocks for code. Um, so in this case, we have a code block that has just some basic C sharp. And when we click run, it's going to ask us what runtime to use. I have Python and I have .NET Inter Interactive installed. Um, so you can select whichever one. Your options may be different depending on your machine. Um, so depending on what environments and things you have installed in your machine, uh, you might get different options here. Uh, so I'm just going to pick .NET Interactive and then it's going to run. And below that, it will display the output. And so we can actually see in real time sort of what's happening. And then if I want, I can just insert some markdown here. And let's just say um, variables. So let's let's talk about variables. So um, <clears throat> there we go. There's our markdown file, uh, but we want this above. So we're just going to click and drag to move it above uh, where this is. And so let's actually add another code snippet. And we're going to say this is var uh, username equals uh, world of zero because that's that's what we're using. Uh, and so this will create a variable for us. And so we want in in this other code sample to use that username. So we're going to reference it. Uh, this is going to, I believe, trigger an error right now because it's not defined. We haven't run the code above it yet. Um, so if I try to run this, we're going to get an error that it doesn't exist. That's because uh, each of these code blocks are executed separately. Um, so you can actually execute each of the code blocks individually and kind of do things. Um, or what you can do is kind of alter the state uh, of, of what you're working on. Um, and in this case, we're going to just execute every cell above this one. And that should execute this line. And so creating our variable for us. Uh, so if we click this, that's done now. And so what I should be able to do is rerun this. And now we get our username defined and, and identified. And so we can actually insert that directly into our code and continue using everything else. You can kind of just build these up over time. So what you can do is kind of like separate out parts of your code with markdown definitions between it and kind of have more rich documentation than just a code comment. Um, so hopefully this is interesting and you can use it. I'm not going to dive too deep into this because it's going to be very specific to what you want. Um, so you can just kind of grab this and play with it yourself. But I thought this was a really fun way to kind of test out um, and share code samples between different um, languages. So hopefully you can use it. And if you do, I'd love to hear about it. So until next time, see you internet.